What's up guys, this is Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys our Playoffs Round 2 Team Builder, going up against uh, my good buddy Cade and the Santa Monica Manaphys. We ended up finishing first um, in our division in the PCL. We went 8-3, plus 14 in the regular season, I believe. Um, and so we secured a buy in the winner's bracket into the second round. So the worst we can finish is top four, which is pretty cool. Um, although there's no third place match, so we would be tied for third, I guess, with whoever loses uh, between Starvin versus Derpy. Now, um, <clears throat> that's if we lose, but obviously you can tell we're off to a bad start. Uh, let's run through Cade's team here. He has Mega Houndoom, Tapu Koko, Gudra, Vaporeon, Delmize, uh, Hitmonlee, Linoon, Celestila, Mew, Pilliswine, and Lee Vanny. Uh, since we last played him in week 3, in a very close match where we only lost 1-0, um, he has made a ton of drops to his team. Uh, he ended up dropping Mega Garchomp for Mega Houndoom. He traded away Volcarona for Gudra. Uh, he traded away Alola Ninetales for Vaporeon. He dropped Drapion for Pilliswine. And I believe he traded Manaphy for Mew. So, he has a wildly different uh, team makeup and we don't have that different of a team. Um, in the meantime, we had dropped Ditto for Miltank and Entei for Cresselia, which makes our team a little bit uh, uh, bulkier, but I think that losing Ditto specifically for this matchup is really bad because honestly, Ditto would be really nice to have against this team right now, and we don't have it. So um, that's kind of what's going down. He has Priority and Mega Houndoom with Sucker Punch, Vaporeon with Quick Attack, Hitmonlee with Mach Punch, Linoon with Extreme Speed, Mew with a build zillion different uh, priorities, uh, and Pilliswine with Ice Shard. He has Hazard Setting in Pilliswine with Stealth Rocks, Mew with Stealth Rocks, and Lee Vanny with Sticky Webs. He has Removal in Delmines with Rapid Spin, Hitmonlee with Rapid Spin, Mew with Defog, and he has uh, one Pokemon with four times weaknesses, that being Lee Vanny, to Fire and Flying. Now, in Week 3... He ended up bringing a team of Mega Garchomp, Tapu Koko, Alolan Ninetales, Hitmonlee, Linoon, and Celesteela. Alolan Ninetales and Mega Garchomp are now gone from his team. Uh, it actually ended up being a scarfed Alolan Ninetales, which I believe ended up winning him the game because I misplayed and I actually could have pulled out that victory. So this time, the only things I'm not expecting are Delmize and Pilliswine. I don't think that Pilliswine has a fantastic matchup against me. Um, it does have an okay matchup against me, granted. Um, it does well into Salamence, Superior. It does well into uh, Tyranitar, Excadrill, and Mega Pidgeot, uh, and Salazzle as well. Um, that's quite a few things that it's... And Raichu, sorry. That's quite a few things that it uh, looks good against. Um, but Cresselia kind of hard walls it. Primarina kind of hard walls it. And Miltank hard walls it for the most part. And so I'm wondering if he's going to be skeptical. I think he maybe goes for more of an offensive approach against my team than a defensive one. Um, I think he's got the defensive Mons in Vaporeon and Celesteela to be able to take on my team. I'm also not expecting Delmize. He didn't bring it last time, and I don't expect it to come this time. However, if it does come, uh, it threatens Cresselia absolutely completely, which is horrific. Like, it's horrendous for me to say that. Um, Mega Garchomp I wasn't expecting last time. It was sort of weird that he brought it against me, and Mega Houndoom is way more of a threat than Mega Garchomp is to my team. Tapu Koko is very obviously coming. Uh, Gudra, I believe, is probably coming because it walls, my, uh, walls me on the special side. Uh, Vaporeon, I think, is coming because it walls me on the physical side. Uh, Hitmonlee, he brought last time with the Electric Seed, and it ended up putting in quite a bit of work against me. It just ended up missing a Stone Edge. Uh, Linoon also put in quite a bit of work against me last time. Uh, I think Mew is always a bring that you should like, I think Mew and Celesteela, the combination of the two of them, are Mons that can come literally every single week, regardless of the matchup. And he didn't bring Lee Venny against me last time, but my team is very scared of webs. So I think he might bring it, but probably not. Um, I don't know if he has the team space to fit Lee Vanny on there, because I've, I, I think he could bring 9 of the 11 um, very reliably, and Lee Vanny maybe just doesn't fit into that build. So, to start things off, um, I usually start boring, but Alolan Persian is kind of boring, even though there's some heat with this. Uh, oh, I forgot, he drafted the Fire EMZ Crystal. Um, he hasn't used it too much, I would imagine. 
that he can use it better now that he's done his drops. I think Mew uses it pretty well. And Gujra can potentially use it pretty well. Um, outside of those... Celesteela can technically use it with Flamethrower. And I think that's it. Um, but that's besides the point. So we've got our Alolan Persian here. Um, we're actually running Flame Orb, which you'll see in a second does something. Uh, with Fur Coat, because Fur Coat's busted. Parting Shot for Momentum. Power Gem to... Uh, deal with the Mega Houndoom if it's switching in on a predicted dark type move. I don't know. Power Gem's just kind of there. Uh, it deals with Levani if he's a lead Levani as well. Um, taunt if he's a lead Levani. I'm going to click Taunt, uh, although I would expect like an X Scissor potentially. Um, taunt to stop whatever. Uh, if I'm in on Vaporeon, I can Taunt it. Uh, we've got Switcheroo to move the Flame Orb onto something that will be threatening. Now, I'm hoping to potentially catch something like a Linoon with this, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if I can catch the Pillis one with this, that would be absolutely hilarious, and then all of a sudden Pillis one doesn't kill my entire team. Uh, catching Mew with this could be cool too, uh, although I do have to keep in mind that Mew could definitely be holding a Z-Crystal. Uh, we're running max speed timid to speed tie with Mega Houndoom. I think the speed is important for me to be able to potentially speed tie and parting shot out on it and make it extremely weak for me to switch something in on. Um, specifically, the Salazzle, I think, is a really good switch in on it. Um, Tyranitar as well, which we'll get onto in a second. Um, 248 HP to make it odd, and I put the rest into defense because I want to boost my fur coat boost as much as I can. Next up is Rai1. We're bringing a Choice Specs Raichu. He has one Electric community on his team, and that's Pillis Wine. Uh, Vaporeon is extremely weak to Electric type attacks, so is Celesteela, and he's giving me the Electric terrain if he brings Tapu Koko. So uh, Raichu can abuse that pretty heftily, uh, pretty handily, I should say. Um, and if he doesn't bring Pillis Wine, then we're actually in a really good spot to pretty much just Volt Switch around on his team. Um, not a lot wants to take Choice Specs Volt Switch, to be completely honest. Uh, I know Raichu's special attack at 90 is like kind of underwhelming, um, but if you include Electric Terrain into that and Choice Specs Boost, it's actually doing a lot of damage. Like, I would imagine we were going to one-shot a Celesteela unless he's Assault Vest Max Spit F, um, for the most part, I think. Uh, we're also going to be hitting the type of Coco really well, and I don't care that we're Choice Locked because we have HP Ground to hit the type of Coco if he wants to switch it in on a incoming electric attack. Um, I do think that Gudra is his initial switch in if there's no Pillow Swine because it's a special tank and I think you bring Gudra to be a special tank. Um, uh, so we have Toxic on there as well for that switch in. Uh, honestly, anything switching in to Raichu... Uh, Celesteel is not switching in to Raichu. Like, let's be real here. Celesteel is not his switch in to Raichu. Uh, anything that switches in, I'm going to Toxic the first time and then I'm going to get the hell out of there. That's the play with this. Raichu is running 176 speed with the Timid Nature. This lets us outspeed his base 100s, uh, being Mew and Linoon. So that's kind of cool. Obviously, we're not eating an extreme speed with Linoon, from Linoon, and Linoon is honestly generally like a massive problem for my team, and I can't stop it with anything. So that's kind of where we're going with this. Um, I debated bringing Cresselia, Fizdef Cresselia, and Cresselia can take it, but what can I do back? Like, pretty much nothing. So... Um, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Uh, we don't have a ton of priority on the team either. Like, we have a lot of priority in Raichu. And... That's... About it, actually. That is it. So, we've got, like, Fake Out and Extreme Speed on Raichu, and I can't imagine that we have any other... I'm not seeing anything. Maybe, like, Quick Attack on Mega Pidgeot, which is not doing anything maybe like fake out on salazzle so um, our priority options are really poor and that just means that linoon kind of tears through our team so we have to make some aggressive doubles i'm going to try and play really aggressively this game because normally when i play against Cade, um, he is the one that gets all the momentum and that will not be the case this time i'm hoping um, that's kind of the goal is to just play like really aggressively uh, and kind of not care about where he's going with it and make him fight back with some aggressive double switches that maybe don't turn out in his favor so yeah max special attack and we have like quite a bit of bulk with 80 hp on the raichu um, i don't know if it'll help us live anything but in general maximizing your hp investment um, with your extra evs is always a good strategy so that's kind of where we're going with that um, next up is Lyra, or tyranitar we're bringing an assault vested tyranitar um, i have not been very how do i say this progressive 
Um, with my Tyranitar builds this season, Tyranitar has kind of been filled into more of a defensive role, and uh, I get that given the nature of how hyper offense my team um, actually is. And I thought it might change a little bit when I picked up Griselia and Miltank, but it actually hasn't changed whatsoever. Um, Tyrannosaur still fills the role of a wall on this team for the most part, and that's how it's going to stay. So we're running Assault Vest Sandstream, obviously, because you see Excadrill up there. Uh, Ice Punch, Crunch, Rock Slide, and Pursuit. We can Pursuit Trap the Mew, and that's kind of what Pursuit's there for. Um, we can Pursuit Trap the Delmize, although I would imagine Delmize just stays in and clicks a Grass type attack. Um, yeah, Pursuit is literally only there for the Mew. I can't imagine why I would have it for anything else. Ice Punch is there to hit the Gujra with. Uh, Rock Slide is there for the Mega Houndoom because we can actually tank Mega Houndoom's attacks pretty well. Uh, and Crunch is there just for good Dark Stab. Um, thinking about it now, Earthquake might be useful just for the Tapu Koko. Um, I was thinking that Rock Slide would be enough. Earthquake might be useful here over maybe Ice Punch. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Earthquake is definitely more useful over Ice Punch. Uh, crunch is really good stab though, so I'm not gonna, not gonna drop that. Uh, I can crunch the Celesteela for quite a bit of good damage. I have to be worried about Heavy Slam from Celesteela, or if it's a special set. Um, actually, you know what? If it's a special set, it's less scary because I'm assault vested. We're running an odd value of HP, but max HP. Uh, max Sack Adamant with eight and Spadef to get more of our assault, uh, out of our assault vest since it multiplies it by 1.5. The more you invest into Spadef, the more especially bulky you are. Uh, next up is Drillby or Excadrill to abuse the sand. It's not really abusing the sand. Sand has an okay matchup against him, but I literally can't break Celesteela with uh, with Excadrill anyways. I wish I had the Fire EMZ <laughs> this game because. Um, Z Firefang on Salamence could actually break the Celesteela, but it can't. Uh, I also don't have the Dark EMZ because something like a Z Crunch could break through some things on this team. I don't know. Ugh. Max Speed Jolly. We don't need that. We need 301. Can we hit that? 301. Um, 301 speed lets us outspeed the Hitmonlee unless he's unburdened. And then if he's unburdened and we are uh, and we're in sand, then we will outspeed him in that case. Uh, that's kind of why I wanted to bring Excadrill for the most part. It doesn't have a super great matchup against this team. I believe I brought it last time and it sort of just sat in front of the Celesteela and did nothing. Um, I would imagine Celesteela does the exact same thing this time. But again, if we need it to outstrip the Hitmonlee when he's unburdened boosted, then I'm going to do it. Um, Mach Punch really hurts. Not going to lie. Mach Punch really really hurts uh, we have a shook on here to be able to potentially take on the pillow swine i don't even know um to be honest i think i brought it to deal with the linoon uh, if we're in sand and linoon tries to stomping tantrum us because e-speed is not going to touch us we're steel type uh if he tries to stomping tantrum us or something like that then shook blocks it but potentially chopel is just a better option there in fact i think i'm actually just going to change it to chopel so that we can live a mock punch Chillan is interesting, but no, I'd rather live the Monk Punch. Uh, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, Rapid Spin, Shadow Claw. Shadow Claw is there because Delmize hard walls this unless we have the Shadow Claw. Um, it's also kind of a neutral hit to hit the Celesteela with. Earthquake basically tears through his team because Celesteela is his only Earthquake dodge, and Levani is frail as all hell. Uh, Rapid Spin to get rid of Sticky Webs if they somehow get up, and Stealth Rocks, which I don't imagine he would actually put up. Um, yeah, our own rocks are pretty good because he's got Mega Houndoom. And I imagine that he'll be switching a lot um, because, like I said, we're going to be trying to get the switch initiative. Uh, yeah, so that's basically extra drill. I don't think I need to talk about max attack. Like, it's it's a base 135 attack. You want to boost that as much as you can. Next up, Samantha, our Salazzle. Uh, we're running Focus Sash, so we can take on the hit only. Uh, last time, I think we lucked, lucked out. <laughs> and just dodge the stone edge, but focus ash is kind of neat. Uh, toxic flamethrower, sub disable. Granted, we can't touch the Mega Houndoom with this, and we're not really touching the Vaporeon, but we can disable and scald. Excuse me. We can disable and scald after it breaks our uh, sub with a scald, and then we can go into Raichu and click Thunderbolt, honestly. 
Um, flamethrower deals with most of his team. Uh, hits the Delmai, Celesteela, hits the Leave Any. Uh, we've got Toxic there for the walls that want to switch in. And Toxic also Toxics the Celesteela, which is cool. Um, that's the only thing that Corrosion benefits us with, but it's a really good way to benefit. With, uh, to benefit. Um, yeah, 240 speed, Timid, lets us outrun Mega Houndoom. Uh, max special attack, 16 HP. Last but not least is Spam, our Mega Pidgeot. Uh, Mega Pidgeot has been so clutch this season. I've enjoyed using that thing so much. Um, 10 out of 10, I would draft Mega Pidgeot again. I think it's absolutely invaluable to the team. And Flying Stab has proven to be a problem for people. Um, case in point. Cade's two Flying Resists are Celesteela, which granted is a good Flying Resist, but we've packed the Heat, heat Wave for that. And Tapu Koko, which is pretty frail for the most part and doesn't want to take a hurricane necessarily i i wouldn't imagine that tapu koko is his switch into a hurricane um i'm still thinking that gudra would be his switch into from switching for hurricane uh, that's kind of what i'm going to play off of um u-turn is there for momentum obviously and so we've got the nice volt switch parting shot u-turn combo going on there and uh defog is there to get rid of webs if i need to i'm not running roost because this is gonna be a fast-paced match i'm gonna tell you right now um, I don't imagine this is going to be a very stally match, and I don't think Roost is going to help me too much. Timid 208 lets us outspeed Mega Houndoom when we're Megad. Max special attack with the rest into HP. So, uh, I'm not very confident in this match. I'm actually a little bit more confident now running through the team builder um, and sort of talking about my strats than I was building last night. But uh, that's sort of the matchup. Uh, we're playing Cade in the Santa Monica Manaphys in the second round of the playoffs because we had a bye. If we lose, not the end of the world. If we win, that would be really cool. Um, and we're going to go into the championship with our heads held high. So I will see you guys for the match.